How does being an image bearer of God affect sexuality? Hi, I'm Emily, and this is Unlocked, your daily key to opening up your heart to God. Wow, I am very excited about today's devotion because it's about something that is so important to God, and yet we as Christians don't always do a very good job talking about it. Sex. Today's story is called The Talk, and it was written by Taylor Ising. Christians are notoriously bad at talking about sex. We gloss over it, give incomplete information, and usually end the conversation with, sex is bad, don't do it. So on behalf of Christians everywhere, I want to apologize. Sometimes we struggle with awkward subjects. We make the mistake of believing that sex has nothing to do with the gospel, but God's word says otherwise. The Bible is overwhelmingly clear. Creation is good, and that means sex is good when it is used as it was created in its God-given context of marriage. God created us, male and female, and he did that on purpose. Males in their maleness and females in their femaleness, brought together in the one man, one woman, one lifetime covenant of marriage before God, reflect his image in a unique way that according to scripture, points to God's relationship with us, his church. You see, sex is a reminder of a covenant that has already been made. It physically acts out the fact that in marriage, spouses have given their whole selves over to that other person, just like Jesus has given his whole self over to us. Sex is an act of loving completely, faithfully and freely, mirroring the way Jesus loves us completely, faithfully and freely. Sex says, I give everything I am to you. I will never leave you or abandon you. I have made a covenant with you and I will never break that covenant. Has Jesus ever said things like that? Here's the hard part for you, as people who, I assume, are not yet married. We cannot act out a covenant that we have not made, and that covenant must be made publicly before God and the church. If we do, we are lying with our bodies. Sex is a good gift from God, and when we misuse this good gift, it is a sin just like any other sin. But, my friends, there is abounding grace in Jesus. Rest in the one who loves you more than anyone, including a future spouse if that's what he has planned for you, ever could. Okay, let me ask you this question again. How does the fact that we bear God's image affect sexuality? How might it shift the way we approach sin issues like lust or pornography? Let me challenge you with one more big thing. Think of a trusted Christian in your life you can talk to about the questions you have about sex. Maybe the thought of talking to an adult about it makes you feel so uncomfortable. I get it. But to have a Christian in your life who can point you back to the truth of God's word and encourage you to honor God with your body is so valuable. Genesis 131 says, God saw all that he had made and it was very good indeed. Evening came and then morning, the sixth day. Everything God made was good. I encourage you to keep reading about this. Check out Matthew 19, 4 through 6, Ephesians 5, 25 through 33, and Hebrews 13, 4 through 5. Until next time, I'm Emily, encouraging you to live life unlocked, opening up the door to God in your life. Unlocked is a production of Keys for Kids Ministries.